let me show you how we can bring in a Genesis 9 character shape onto the older Genesis 8 generation. And while I'm loading my figures here, I'm going to talk you through the pros and cons. I'm going to go and start with Genesis 9's dev load character here. Let me load that in. So this is much as just as flawed as all the other previous uh, character conversion videos that I've shown. But there were a few questions and I'm going to I'm going to show you how this works. This is the Genesis 9 dev load. I'm also going to use the Genesis 8.1 female dev load character here they both need to be in the scene and essentially what we're going to be doing is exporting genesis 8 in the shape of genesis 9 out then we're going to make genesis 9 wear that fit suit dial in the character shape and that in the form of genesis 8 gets exported as an obj and then imported as a morph dial so with these two figures in the scene, I'm going to go and make my Genesis 8 figure invisible. And with Genesis 9 selected, let me go and bring up the developer tools. This is a really handy feature that we can utilize to make this happen. This is really designed for a clothing creation, but we can use it for this fit suit method as well. So with Genesis 9 selected on the utilities tab in the parameters tab we can find this thing here that's called developer tools and everyone has access to it which is great click that and then a little pop-up menu comes up here and with that we can now go and say set g9 to shape and what that does is essentially under the hood set a new base shape so you may have noticed that under the hidden tab here under clones we have all these clone dials here and one of them is to bring back the Genesis 8 female shape or the male shape. But of course, that is now a morph. So ideally what we want is for this shape to be reached, but without that to be a morph. So this morph essentially needs to be set to zero. And that is what these developer tools do here. So if we go and set G9 to shape, we can pick what shape that is. So in our case, we're going to convert a female character. So Genesis 8 female and hit accept. Comes up with this question here. Do you want to zero or restore? We're going to go and say restore. And that takes a second. And that now brings us the Genesis 8 shape, but with the Genesis 9 geometry. You'll also notice that this morph has now been favorited on the parameters tab under favorites. We've got this dial. We can now dial this out again. But this is kind of the secret component here. When this dial is at zero, this is now the new Genesis 9 base shape. And as such, we can now bring back our Genesis 8 figure and we'll see they're almost identical they're almost in the correct place but the legs they need a tweak but not on the genesis 9 figure they're going to need it on the genesis 8 figure and remember this step because we need to bring this back later so with my genesis 8 figure selected i can go and i'm going to use power pose for this and bring that on the body here so it's the left thigh and the right thigh that need a little bit of an adjustment and i believe it is exactly side side rotation i think it is six let's say minus six on the left and then conversely six on the right there we go so this is now genesis 8's a position tweaked so that it matches up with the genesis 9 eight shape so to say so that is that is good news that's exactly what we want okay now let's select genesis 8.1 and export them out so that they become an obj that we can turn into the fit suit one other thing very important under mesh resolution set that from high resolution to base resolution and then go and file export this out as an obj i've got some test files here already i might just go and make myself a new folder on the desktop I'll call this one conversion and in it I'm going to call this one G8 fit suit just so that we know what that is. Save that out at your favorite resolution. I prefer to use the DAS Studio template for this. Very important over here under filter objects, make sure that's enabled and that means only the Genesis 8 figure is exported without anything else. Export that out and now we can go and just hide the Genesis 8 figure here. Let's go do that now. Genesis 9 is visible. Now let's go and import the OBJ again. Desktop conversion G8 fit suit. Here we go. Import that with the same preset. So Dash Studio, hit accept. And boom, there we go. Just so that we can tell these guys apart, I'm going to color in the fit suit just so that we see what's what. 
Let's make it anything but gray. Something green is fine. There we go. Cool. So now we can turn the fit suit into a follower kind of clothing item, so to say, if you will. And for that, with the Genesis 8 figure selected, we'll go to our developer tools here and we will choose create follower from this. And when we do that, it takes a moment and it technically runs the transfer utility under the hood. And it's just popped into place. It also applies a smoothing modifier. We don't really want to see that. So we're going to switch it off in a moment. It makes sure that there's no poke through between the base figure and what the figure is wearing, which is in this case, the fit suit. But we're not uh, concerned about that. So with the G8 fit suit selected on the parameters tab under mesh smoothing, disable that so that we can see these, you know, half pokey through bits here, because that's kind of what we want. So perfect. Now we can go and select Genesis 9 and turn them back into the Genesis 8 figure. So that happens also with the developer tools. You can also do that on the favorite style where the Genesis 8 female dial is still set up there. You can go and dial that out. So what this does now is that the green figure, which is the Genesis 8 geometry, is now being turned into the Genesis 9 shape. And that is important because that is what we're going to essentially export out for the morph later on. So once we've done that, dial this out, we want to go and update the follower base shape. That is now going to be our followers new base shape. Click that in the developer tools. Oop, actually, that didn't work because we need to select the fit suit for that to happen. So update follower base shape on that. Perfect. Update successful. And now it looks like it's no longer matching, but that's fine. Now we're going to go and select Genesis 9 and set them back to their original shape. So this is still set to minus 100. We don't want that. Let's go back to set G9 to shape and turn that just hit accept. So restore from Genesis 8 female. It'll come up automatically. Hit accept. Hit restore. And now they're both in the same position again. But it's now the Genesis 9 shape. And most importantly, it's still a fit suit. So that's kind of the, the big magic b behind this backwards conversion process here. We don't need the developer tools anymore. We can go and select the Genesis 9 figure and pick a figure of our liking. So under Genesis 9, and uh, actor, I can go to people and then pick myself a character that I want to use. Maybe Angela 9, left click and drag that up. And then you can see that both figures shape into Angela 9. So that's, you know, that's exactly what we want which is nice. You can also go and switch off the Genesis 9 figure just so that you can see, uh, is this the right shape? Is this what you were expecting? If so, then go ahead. You can also mix and match other characters together. So this is our basic female shape and this would be Freya 9. So, you know, whatever you want, we can, we can, you know, bring onto the Genesis 8 figure. So this is Josie or Julia, even though she doesn't really look like my Julia. So it's, you know, it's, it's weird looking at her. <laughs> my wife is called Julia. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confused that she doesn't look like her. Let me just go and pick the first item in the list and let me go stick with Angela. Uh, technically, all we need to do now is export Genesis 8 out at this base resolution and import them in and do the finish the rigging on the Genesis 8 figure. But of course, we've changed the leg position, so we need to undo that. We need to make sure that is being brought back to the correct position. And that is, interestingly enough, different than the previous position. I've, I've tested this out. If you fancy, you can literally go and dial up the Genesis 8 shape again here under hidden clones. Let's make that Genesis 8 again and then bring back your Genesis 8.1 original figure in the viewport, which we have tweaked for this position on that figure. Hold down control shift F so that that figure gets turned back into the regular A pose when we see the legs need to be tweaked. So let's go and tweak that back on the Genesis 9 figure. Now I can tell you now it is actually just six and a half, seven and a half. What was it again? It's not quite six as you would imagine. It's a little bit more than that. So I think it was was it seven? No, seven is too much. So it's six and a half, so 6.5, well, pretty much on the left and the right thigh. So this is now minus 6.5. This is what I meant when I said there is a lot of work involved. So think very carefully, do you really need that? You know, yes, it is possible. Is it worth your while? It's always a really, really important question you should ask yourself. I'm going to go and make Genesis 8.1 invisible again. And I'm going to go with the Genesis 9 figure selector. I'm going to go and 
dial the Genesis 9 morph back out and bring back the morph that I actually want, which is, what was it again? Angela here under people. There we go. This is what Angela needs to look like so that the legs match. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem with the poses later. Okay, that is all there is to it. Now comes the part where we go and select our Genesis 8 fit suit and export that out so that we can import it onto the Genesis 8 figure and create that morph for it. So with that selected, head over to File, Export and go and call that one G8 Angela, for example. Hit Save. And once again, same Resolution as before here, Dash Studio preset, it'll remember what you've what you've ticked here and make sure filter object is set to selected roots. Otherwise, multiple figures will be exported and we don't want that. We only want this geometry. And that is all we needed from Angela. Let's make her invisible as well. Bring back our original Genesis 8.1 figure, namely this one here. And that has already been reset. Now we need to go grab Morph Loader, edit object morph loader pro and import uh, what we've just exported as a morph and that happens over here more files and this is going to be in my conversions folder and this is going to be g8 angela let's go do that the only thing that we need to pick here or that i'd like to pick here is set reverse deformations to yes if you have trouble selecting that it is actually select this row and then right click on the word and then this little drop down menu comes up. I've, I've heard reports that people say I don't have a drop down menu there. It is a little bit difficult to reach so that's that's all there's to it. And if you want to override an existing morph you can do that. We don't need one at the moment because we don't have an Angela morph but if you've made a mistake and you need to re-import this you can just go and say uh, deltas only and then that'll that'll happen. We're going to do that created morph successfully. That's what we want to hear. And then on our parameters tab with the Genesis 8 figure selected under morphs, we can now go and dial in Angela. That's perfect. But this is now the actual Angela, well, Genesis 8.1 figure. See that geometry is as we expected from Genesis 8. So that's perfect couple of adjustments here on the slider little gear icon i'm going to go and set that to minimum zero rather than minus 100 and now it doesn't go into the negative second thing we need to do we need to choose the joint editor tool and make sure the rigging is adjusted to the shape so click right onto your figure head over to edit and there's adjust rigging to shape we need to do that so that the poses are going to work everything is fine here you don't need to set anything hit, hit accept takes a moment to calculate and now the skeleton is where it should be for Angela but only when the Angela slider is dialed up so if you dial that out you can see that the morph moves but the skeleton doesn't move with it so that requires an extra step namely by putting this whole pane into edit mode right click edit mode and then right click on the slider and hit ERC freeze that takes another moment that just lets Dash Studio marry up the position of the slider with all the values so that they can now if we exit edit mode you can now see that the skeleton is being interpolated as we move the slider that's perfect quick test run with a few poses to see that there's no alien arms and all that this is one of those things that can can often happen but it does not right now so that looks that looks kind of nice few adjustments are always necessary because of the body volume that is probably different from the genesis 8 base figure so there we go that's perfect let's just try a skin texture here i might go and find something that is uh, well not for Genesis 9, so this does not convert skin textures, of course, but maybe we'll use Jinx Jones. That is a good Jinx, or maybe um, Jada. How's that? Jada 8.1. Let's go and apply those materials on there, or maps. There we go. Fantastic. Everything works. There's no seams. Everything is groovy. And now you can have some of the cool Genesis 9 shapes in your Genesis 8 library with all that old functionality if you're currently invested in a project that requires it. Let me just quickly try the eyes here with, not Puppeteer, but Power Pose. If I go to her eyes, then I can go and switch that off. And I can see that, yep, they do work exactly as I expected. They also didn't need a change. I mean, that is something that you may find you need depending on how your character was originally set up if they had larger eyes from kind of toon figures let me just go and open her mouth just show you the teeth here 
this was on jaw open jaw open there we go so teeth also look good <laughs> but if they don't then there are ways to fix this of course but it looks like we're okay so sometimes you may have to go into a modeling application and then go and make some adjustments on the eyes or teeth remember they're with the same geometry as the base figure so they're not separate as they are on genesis 9. so yeah those are all the steps that are necessary to convert your characters now make no mistakes about it this is not something that you're supposed to do this is just something that some of you wanted to know how it works and yes it does work but really evaluate carefully is it worth your time and effort to do this or do you just want to you know if you want to enjoy everything genesis 9 has to offer then i would suggest you stick with genesis 9 and you know build up your library from that but there are rare occasions where you might want to go back so that's why i'm showing it to you thank you so much for watching and i hope this was helpful take care bye bye